teach. Ray. You have to set up Ray. Violinist Earl Carlos teaches. It sounds too much like... Since they've been that impulsive, then in 46 and... And cellist Joel Krosnick teaches. We don't stop. They've been playing... Now, that and violist Samuel Rhodes teaches. Put on the bench and it would come out right. So you need to do something uh, very gypsy-like. And violinist Robert Mann. Now, now, now you're playing louder, but you're not stopping as abrupt. Da, ba, da, that stop as if, as if you're cut off, you see? I mean, Beethoven's intensity is developed not just by the sounds, but by the silences. Make sure and when those four men talk about chamber music, musicians sit up and take notice, because those four teachers just happen to be the Juilliard String Quartet. It's been in existence now since 1946, which makes it the longest running major string quartet in existence. That makes this their 35th anniversary year. Of the four, only first violinist Robert Mann was there at the beginning. He's from Oregon. All four are Americans. Earl Carlos of Chicago became second violinist in 1966. New Yorker Samuel Rhodes joined in 1969 as the violist. And Joel Krosnick, the cellist, is from New Haven. He's been in the quartet seven years now. The new kid. Also, there was some adjusting to do. It's an incredible thing to be in that intimate relationship. Uh, it affects every sound you make, every motion you make. And the first uh, rehearsals were positively sort of unnerving to my body and in, in, in motion, not, not in a displeasing way. Did you tend to defer to the more senior members of the ensemble? That's one of the things that never really happened. I was never said, well, this is the way we do it in the Juilliard Quartet. You know, would you please do that? Uh, that never happened. One of the things that uh, occasionally you said, we, we've had changes over the years, you know. And what's happened every time there's been a change, and I can only assume that my, my instance was typical, is that um, new questions are asked, old questions are re-examined. Uh, my responsibility was to come prepared well enough to answer a question. All right, so, so now what don't you like about what we do? I thought that was just wonderful. I don't know if you felt different. I mean, it's well, in tempo, and you can, you can have it that way, but you know, Bobby, it does change when you play that tune again. But, the, but but it's a it's a it's this kind of float. It's a, a, that tune if it starts I'm spreading. I'm not sp uh, spreading. By Musicians, virtuoso performers in their own right. And yet, in the quartet, four goes into one. And Robert Mann would be the first to tell you, even though he's a founder and first violinist, that he is not the boss of the Juilliard. 
let's say in my dreams it should be that way, but uh, you're in the century of democracy if you, in case you haven't looked around. At least in America, you don't have any dictators or authoritarian heads, so I cannot domineer. No way. I Not even musically? Say. No. Uh, the only kind of influence that any one individual in the quartet has is what comes naturally. You know, for the lowest three voices, I, I don't see any kind of uh, feeling of the pulse. You don't feel that as a unit. The Juilliard Quartet teaches at Michigan State University in East Lansing, and of course in New York, where they're based at the Juilliard School, and where the group was first put together. <laughs> The fact that they are an eminent performing quartet helps in the teaching, but it works the other way around, too. Now. More. Earl Carlos says the teaching helps the playing. Yeah, that's not nearly enough. I don't think I could exist without teaching, because I gain as much or more than the students do, in my judgment. They bring to the music different elements. And we, very often, I have uh, been puzzling over a section of music that we have done ourselves. And a, st and a student group will come in and solve something in, in my mind. They're not even aware what, of what they're doing. They, they just, it just, uh, it, it brings a new element that it may be accidental. They teach. They rehearse, they perform, and they record. The Juilliard has made over a hundred major recordings since 1949, and they're still at it. Okay, this will be test two. Test one. So Mann, Rhodes, Carlos, and Krosnick spend a great deal of time together. And it's good they get along as well as they do. That's important, Sam Rhodes says. Could you play a little louder, please? <laughs> in, in, in a relationship like a quartet, we are together so much, and we have to understand each other's point of view about the music to such an extent, if you didn't really like each other, if you didn't have respect for each other, it would make it, instead of heaven that it is now, it would make it hell. And, of course, that's been known to happen. That's, uh, that sounds a lot like marriage, doesn't it? Uh, they, it's, Cortez's life has been compared to marriage at times. Well, first of all, I think 30 is not loud enough. I mean, that should be oh, distinctive. I'm as loud as I, can be. I, I can't play any louder. I don't know about it. The four men do have their separate lives, of course. All except Krosnick are married and have kids. In the summertime, they go their separate ways. But in season, especially this 35th anniversary season, they are together all the time. We play our best, and when we stand up at the end and we take a bow, I mean, I'll tell you, we all think it's the best. And yet there is always the sense that it could be better. And that is what has kept the Juilliard String Quartet going for 35 years. You don't ever say, I have now performed that piece the way it should be performed. It never occurs that way, because no matter how satisfying a momentary interpretation is, Beethoven has left so many things that cannot be solved. The very nature of the message is that it's questioning. It's questioning man's relationship to man and, and to the universe, so that you're always constantly changing. How can you get tired of that? It's like looking up at the sky. You ever get tired of looking at the sky? 